Hey guys, welcome to the 30 Paintings in 30 Days project. Right, if you so. choose to join me on the 30 Paintings in 30 Days journey, I hope that you do share and tag me in posts like on social media and stuff. Maybe film some videos, tag me in the description, something like that. Um, I am um, kind of excited about the project. I do do daily drawing. I don't necessarily do daily painting, but making a daily practice out of something like this encourages you to... Um, get better at it, um, encourages you to work it into your daily routine or weekly routine. Um, it also is a way to use up supplies. So if that's your goal, uh, maybe you don't want to do 30 paintings in 30 days, but you want to do 30 collages in 30 days. So that works too. So let me know. Let's get to painting and I'll see you at the end. Hey guys, we are here for our painting number 24 of our little 30 and 30 painting series. Um, where we're doing all these little uh, watercolor sort of studies. Um, we did have to switch journals because I filled up the last one that we were working in. And I will be honest with you, I am not a huge fan of the paper in this journal, which I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the brand is. I do think it's from Hobby Lobby. Um, the other journal we were working in was a moleskin watercolor journal. I, I also like Strathmore. I'm a fan of Arches and Fabriano paper. I don't know, remember what the brand is on this one, but I'm not a huge fan. It tends to really bleed through the black back really badly. Um, I've done some other work in here. You can see on this page. So we're gonna just be working on single sides. Um, I learned that with this journal right away, pretty quickly. So, um, and I'm probably not gonna tape off any edges because um, I really just wanna use up the paper in this journal, because again, not a fan. So there we go. All my disclaimers are said and done. Um, I've got all my brushes out. I've got some clean water. I switched paint palettes. So this is one of my bigger palettes and this is my Shimiki palette. I have this year been doing a um, project um, inspired by the beauty YouTubers that do Project Pan, trying to use up some of their makeup and try things that are just sitting that they haven't tried yet to see if they even like them. Um, and I figure, you know, art, artists and um, people who have tons of art supplies, we kind of need to do the same thing. So I have the Schminky palette. I do love it. I just don't use it very much because I have lots of other watercolor paint. And I'm a huge Daniel Smith fan, although this palette is great and they're fabulous colors. I really, really love my Daniel Smith colors, but I have it, I should use it. It was expensive, so yeah. All right, I also have a inspiration uh, photo page turned in my book over there. I think the images are from either a magazine page or wrapping paper or something, and they're sort of illustratorly versions of poppies which just inspired me to maybe do some poppy flowers. So I'm gonna get my brush. I usually start with the half inch flat Princeton Neptune brush, which I love. And I'm gonna just get it wet here. And we're gonna start with the chrome orange here in the Schminky palette, which is this color here. And I'm gonna just kind of map out some poppy petals. I'm suggesting a poppy. I'm not trying to be realistic about it. And the page that I have turned to, it has these illustratorly flowers that remind me of a poppy, but they are not poppies. So we are just being um, expressive and we're taking inspiration from, and we are trying new things, which is what this is all about. And I'm just using my brush, I'm putting it flat on the paper, and then I'm just kind of turning it to do sort of a petally shape, seeing what I get. Of course, I'm starting light. We'll work our way darker. Um, although I live in Oregon now, I am a California native for those that don't know. And um, I'm just inspired to do some sort of California poppy um, or orange poppy. I don't know that it'll come out looking like California poppy because I don't think California poppies have black centers and I kind of want to give it a black center. So anyway, 
but I want that kind of orangey apricotty color. Okay, then I'm gonna go into transparent orange. And I'm gonna add a little bit of that to the petals um, and use it as my shadow color, really getting the edges, getting the center where the center of the flower is and the petals would be curling in so it would be a little bit darker to the viewer. And you know, the paint is still wet or semi-wet, so it's gonna blend a little bit. I am using just the tips of um, my flat brush and occasionally touching it flat down to the paper to get a different kind of mark. And it's just really all about playing with the mark making, getting used to working with your brush, whichever one you're choosing to do this with. Something like that. I like that. Um, there is a Payne's gray in here, one, two, three, four, which is a dark blue gray, one of my favorite colors. There we go. So we're gonna put that here. And then we're gonna give it a dry. I'll be right back. Okay, now we can go on. I, I wanna admit to you something. So when you're doing a painting and even though you kind of know in the back of your mind it's not really done yet, but you really like where it is at, stop and take a picture. Um, I um, just did that with this. I could really, really, see, although I, despite the fact that I don't like the paper and you can tell it's just doing funky things already on the back. Um, I could see me using this as inspiration or taking this, having my daughter help me take this exact image and put making stickers out of it or background paper or fabric or something else, um, just as it is without adding anything else. So I did stop and take a photo. So there's a hint or tip for you. All right, let's get keep going. I'm gonna for now stick with my flat brush, but we'll see how long that lasts. Um, I am going to pick up some neutral tint and mix it with the Payne's Gray. I have some dark something over here on the palette too, so let's just mix them all together. And let's just tap the edges of the brush to the center of the flowers to add some darkness and depth. To what's going on. Okay, while that dries, we're going to grab a green. And I'm going to grab Okay, sorry, there was suddenly noise in the background. It's children outside playing. <laughs> I'm going to grab the olive green, olive green yellow that's in this palette. And we are going to just suggest some, some greenery. Again, I'm, so I'm just, I push, touch the brush to the paper, push it down and then just twist it around. Then I'm gonna rinse it off. I'm going to get some water. And again, this paper, this paper must have a lot of cotton or something in it. It just really, really absorbs the paint super, super quickly. And I kind of don't always have time to move things around the way I want because of what it's doing with the paint. It's a challenge to work with, but you know, this is a good um, illustration of why you should do some of these little studies. You don't have to do 30 of them in 30 days, but these kind of studies are a great idea when you're trying new paint, new paper, new brushes, just to get used to the supplies that you have. Okay, I am going to now go in with, we're gonna let those greenery suggestions dry. And I'm gonna go in with, ooh, what color do I wanna go with? Uh, maybe ultraviolet, which is a purple. I've got one of my smaller round brushes. This is the round number one. And I'm gonna go into these flower centers. It needs a little more water. Yeah. 
and I'm going to just do some a little bit of defining not too much because I want to be you know I want it to be fairly suggestive so so rather than drying things all the time you can of course you know proper watercolorists what they do is they do the like the leaves and then they'll work on another part of the painting while those dries and then those dry and then they'll go back to work on the leaves so um, I, I usually have no patience so I usually don't do it that way okay well, that's pretty good then I'm going to take the same brush and I'm going to go in with a uh, cadmium red light which is an orangey red and we're going to just add a little bit of that into a little bit of more there we go I'm going to again we're just defining some shapes not all of them we're I, I like to be more of a suggestive painter so it's not about doing detail not for me it may be for you there's nothing wrong with that so I'm just I'm uh, again as I've stated in other videos I'm barely touching the brush to the paper just using the very tip of it to just um, do a partial outline on some of these petally shapes. There we go. So there we go, there's our poppies. I'm gonna give it a dry and on to the next. How was that for today's painting? I hope you enjoyed the process and um, if you want instruction on the painting, you need to be over on Patreon. They are gonna get the talking version here on YouTube. You're just gonna get the speed fruit through version, sorry. Um, if you'd like to support the free content here on Facebook or in the, fa uh, here on Facebook, holy cow. If you'd like to support the free content here on YouTube or over in the Facebook art groups, I certainly would appreciate that. You can of course join Patreon. We do have YouTube membership here for a, a small fee. And um, also I have an Etsy shop and I have um, PayPal tip jar and all that stuff. So check out the video description. Relevant links will also be down there. And uh, yeah, don't forget the most important things. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay creative, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Do share your work with me. I would love to see what you're doing. That's it for now. See you later. Bye guys.